This video is sponsored by Birch Living. Hello, spooky friends. Today, I will be sharing with you quite the lengthy list of highly anticipated releases for the fall, including books, films, and television series. So buckle up, get ready, and get yourself something cozy to drink. Cheers. This looks like a cool mug, but like, how do you actually drink from it? I think you have to, okay. Hello, spooky friends. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is such an exciting video, you guys. I love making this video every single year because today's video is going to be a list of my highly anticipated releases basically for the rest of the year. The focus is obviously going to be on autumnal and spooky things. I have to tell you, this year, We've got some gems, okay? There are so many different books that I'm really, really excited about as well as new Netflix series and also new movies. It's gonna be a good time and I can't wait to dive into the list with you. But before we go ahead and get started, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Birch Living. Thank you so much to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. I have so many books on my highly anticipated fall reading list, but do you know what else I'm highly anticipating? Going to sleep tonight on my Birch mattress. Birch is a premium mattress mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It was really important for me to choose a birch mattress that was made with organic and natural materials because I tend to get really hot when I sleep. But the birch mattress organic materials actually help me to feel cool and regulate my body temperature throughout the night, which means less tossing and turning and more sweet dreams about books. In addition to being a better mattress for me, birch is also committed to being a better mattress for the planet. I love that birch partners with ethical partners that adhere to strict social, environmental, and economical standards. And I ordered their Birch Lux mattress, a premium upgrade to their original, well-loved Birch Natural mattress. And you guys, it literally feels like I am sleeping on a cloud. I've had my Birch mattress now for over three months and I can honestly say I've never had a more comfortable sleep in my entire life. I also find way more excuses to use my bed more now than ever, not just for sleep, but also it has become my new favorite reading spot. I literally never want to leave. And with your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. And if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, don't worry. You get more than three months to make sure that you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. And the best part about all this is that Birch actually delivers the mattress right to your door. So it's super, super convenient and very easy to set up. And each Birch mattress also comes with two of their eco pillows. They are so incredibly comfortable and they're also made from recycled plastic bottles, which I think Think is super cool. I also highly recommend pairing your birch mattress with a birch mattress topper. It is one of the most plush and luxurious things in the whole entire world. And when I sleep with it again, it feels like I am literally sleeping on a cloud. I love my Birch Lux mattress and I think you will too. And if you are in the market for a new mattress, you can actually check them out by either clicking on the link in my description or going to birchliving.com slash Alexandra. And using that link is actually going to help you save $400 on a mattress, plus you get two eco pillows. Thank you again so much Birch for sponsoring today's video. I highly recommend you check them out. Links all down below in the description. And now back to the video. Okay, you guys, so I have comprised a list list of new releases and really the releases are from August all the way through I think November is possibly the last one and then the same kind of goes for the television series and the movies they're all things that are released from August all the way through I think to December for the movies most of them have not come out yet so most of these I'm just gonna be popping on the screen so that you can see and reading off the summary for a couple of them and uh, yeah I think that's it so Let's go ahead and get started with the book list. To start off the list, I'm going to tell you all of my anticipated releases that have to do with witches. 
I love a good practical magic vibe in this house. So I have quite a few books on here that fit the bill for witches. Okay, so starting off the list, we have a middle grade. And this middle grade, I'm pretty sure came out, I wanna say like in July, but I really feel like it'll be perfect for the upcoming autumn months. And it is called The Marvelers, and this is by Daniela Clayton. The cover is so unbelievably beautiful. I am so excited. So this book takes place kind of at a magic school, and I love boarding schools and magic schools set kind of like in the autumn time, so it immediately had my attention. We're following 11-year-old Ella, and Ella is the first conjurer to kind of like make it into this magical institute. And the magical institute, by the way, this like magical academy, literally takes place in the clouds. Like, please look at the end papers. This is so cool. And to be honest, when I saw the end papers, that's what really sold me on the book. I was like, this place looks so freaking cool. The magic system in this also sounds really, really cool. Basically, all of the students who go to this institute are practicing their specific arts to their culture. So like all of their magic is different depending on where they're from and their ancestry, which I absolutely love. I don't think we've ever seen that take before and I think it's so interesting. Ella is the first conjurer and because she's the first, she's actually mistrusted like immediately. And then on top of everything else, there is apparently someone who escaped a magical prison with the help of a conjurer and now everyone suspects Ella. The next book I really really want to read is called The Glass Witch and this is by Lindsay Puckett and this comes out October 18th and it is a fantasy middle grade. So I love this. This is about a 12 year old witch named Adelaide Good who has never quite felt good enough. What an excellent pun Lindsay. Like what an excellent pun. Her last name is Good and she's never felt good enough. Iconic already. So it says 12 year old Adelaide Good has never been good enough. Ever the disappointment, she's the weakest witch born in three centuries and has absolutely zero chance as the town's fat girl of winning Cranberry Hall's Halloween pageant. But winning brings glory and glory means proving herself worthy of the good name, which is all Addie's ever wanted. What she most certainly does not want, however, is to enact a curse waking a 300 year old witch hunter from the grave. Not to mention the curse has turned Addie's bones into glass, sprouting more and more cracks as midnight approaches, which makes it terribly hard to run in heels. So I could not be more excited for this book. I feel like it is already brimming with like humor and charm and magic. I love Addie already. I feel like she's gonna be one of my favorite protagonists of the year. And I just can't wait to read this one. The next book is the sequel to The Witch Haven. And this is by Sasha. Peyton Smith, there we go, Sasha Peyton Smith. And I think the sequel actually comes out in October. Yes, it comes out October 11th. I won't tell you what the second one is about, but I will tell you what the first one is about just in case you're interested in picking them both up this spooky season. So we are following Francis and Francis is a seamstress. I think, I wanna say like either in the late 1800s or the early 1900s, yeah, 1911 in New York City. And her boss actually tries to attack her, but but when he does, she seems to use magic to defend herself, but she didn't know she had any magic before. She's actually rescued from the police when two people come and tell her that she needs to go to a sanitarium because I think she's like very sick. But when she gets there, she realizes it's actually an academy for witches and it's brimming with atmosphere. It's so incredible. I love it so much. It's got dark academia vibes. It's got fantasy vibes. It's the perfect YA book if you're looking for something a little spooky and also just like very, very atmospheric. I also love the friendships in this book so much. Um, so I'm very excited to read book number two because this one was a home run. I think I gave this five stars. The next one is also a book that is out now. I believe this came out in August and it's called The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And this is adult. And I think it might potentially be a romance. It definitely has romance in it. I don't know if it's classified as adult romance, but I think it might be. This is a warm and uplifting novel about an isolated witch whose opportunity to embrace a new quirky family and new love changes the course of her life. For this particular book, I'm going to read the synopsis because I really want to do it justice and it sounds so cute and charming. So it says, as one of the few witches in Britain, Micah Moon knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down, and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. As an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by straight 
strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules with one exception. She has an online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will actually take it seriously, but someone does. An unexpected message arrives begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches how to control their magic. It breaks all the rules, but Micah goes anyways and immediately is tangled up in the lives and secrets of not only three charges, but also an abstract archeologist, a retired actor, two long suffering caretakers, and Jamie. I love everything about this. This is one of my most highly anticipated reads this autumn. I'm so excited. I love books about witches. Like that's gonna be a theme you're gonna see. I love that she's gonna be like teaching these little girls. I love that she's going to be possibly falling in love. Like everything about this sounds amazing and I can't wait to read it. The next one is another one that is out now. It came out August 23rd and it's called Small Town Big Magic and this is by Hazel Beck and it is adult. So the vibes for this one feel very, very practical magic when I was checking it out. And I am living for it, okay? Small town, quaint bookshop, found family, and surprising magical abilities. This synopsis of this book has me in a literal chokehold, okay? So this book is following Emerson Wilde, and Emerson Wilde feels like she has it all. She lives in the perfect small town with the perfect found family group of friends, and she works at a very quaint, perfect little independent bookshop, which she loves. But all of that is compromised when one day she is randomly attacked by a group of monsters and defends herself with what can only be described as magic. But she's not a witch, right? And magic doesn't exist. Exist, does it? Tell me you wouldn't want to see that movie, okay? You're lying, you want to see it. I know you want to see it. Okay, so those were all of my witchy books and now let's go ahead and go on to the more spooky and gothic reads. So the first book is one of the only books I actually have here in front of me and it is Babel by RF Kuang. You already knew this was gonna be on this list, okay? Like, let's be real. We both knew that I was going to be featuring this book on this list. So this actually came out in August, in late August, and I have been excited about this book you guys for like two years. Ever since RF Kuang first announced that she was writing like a dark academia book, I was like, sign me the f up. This particular book is an adult fantasy and it also obviously has dark academia vibes and I think it takes place in the 1800s. We're following a scholar named Robin Swift and he has been recruited to go into Babel which is a language institute I think and it's part of Oxford but what's really incredible about this program is it also apparently it has to do with like magic and things like that because magic stems from languages in this world if I'm getting that correctly and I'm excited for this for so many reasons. I love the dark academia vibes and I love the atmosphere already of it taking place in the 1800s, but I'm also really excited about the topics that this is going to explore, specifically with colonization. Next up is Belladonna and Belladonna is out now. This is a YA book and this is by Adeline Grace. It says, orphaned as a baby, 19 year old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well being, and each has met an untimely end. Her remaining relatives relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties, but when their mother's restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned, Signa realizes that the family she depends on could be in grave danger, and she enlists the help of a surely stable boy to hunt down the killer. The next one is a middle grade, and it is called The Curse on Spectacle Key, and this is out September 6th. Oh, and it's by Shannon. Chantel Acevedo. So this is about Frank Fernandez and Frank Fernandez is really excited because after years and years of moving around, his family has finally decided to stay in one location, which is this really cool lighthouse. What they don't know, however, is that the lighthouse and the island that the lighthouse is on is actually haunted and potentially cursed. One day when Frank is exploring the lighthouse, he comes across what I'm assuming is going to be a ghost. It's a girl. Um, with old clothes on. And she kind of explains to Frank that the island is cursed and they both decide that they have to try to break the curse together. I love this for so many reasons. First of all, I love a good ghost story, especially in a middle grade. But second of all, I love that we're gonna be getting like some Casper vibes here with like being besties with a ghost. I say this every Halloween, but I would love to be besties with a ghost. This sounds like such a fun time. I'm so excited to read it. Yeah, and so that's that one. Next up is a YA book called A Dreadful Splendor. And again, I think this is 
already out. This came out in August, and this has some pretty gothic vibes to it as well, which as I'm sure you'll be able to tell, is definitely my thing. And this is by B.R. Myers. So this says, be careful what you conjure. <laughs> that actually sounded pretty legit, okay. In Victorian London, Genevieve Timmins poses as a spiritualist to swindle wealthy mourners until one misstep lands her in a jail cell awaiting the noose. When a stranger arrives to make her a peculiar offer, the Lord he serves, Mr. Pemberton, has been inconsolable since the tragedy death of his beautiful bride-to-be. If Genevieve can perform a seance persuasive enough to bring the young Lord peace, she will win her freedom. Next up, we've got The Fleeting Shadows, and this again came out in August. It's out now, and this is by Kate Alice Marshall. I freaking love Kate Alice Marshall. A couple of years ago, I actually read her YA book, Rules for Vanishing, and I read this for Spookathon. I'll like link it somewhere because it's one of my favorite reading vlogs. I was terrified reading that, and I actually think that that is the book that sparked kind of like this love for thrillers and mysteries. As soon as I heard that she was coming out with something new, I immediately put it on my list and my radar, and we're gonna talk about it now. It says that this is The Haunting of Hill House meets Knives Out. Are you joking me? Like when I read that combination, I got so excited. I love Knives Out. Helen doesn't know why she and her mother left their ancestral home at Harrow Stone Hall called Harrow, um, or why they haven't spoken to their extended family since. So when her grandfather dies, she's shocked to learn that he has left everything, the house, the grounds, the money, to her. The inheritance comes with one condition. She must stay on the grounds of Haro for one full year or she will be left nothing. I like love this already, you guys. You, you don't even know. I like, I love it. There is more at stake than money for as long as she can remember. Haro has haunted Helen's dreams and now those dreams have become a waking nightmare. And then the last three books are all anthologies, actually. The first one is called At Midnight. Oh my gosh, just like Taylor Swift's new album. And it comes out November 22nd. And this is a YA anthology that has been edited by Dahlia Adler. She has actually come out with two other anthologies. The first one was a Shakespeare inspired anthology. And then the second one was, I think like short stories inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's short stories and poetry. And this one is completely inspired by fairy tales. The next one is called The Gathering Dark. And this comes out September 6th, and this is a YA anthology, and it has been edited by Tori Bovolino. I have a little blurb on it. First of all, the cover, like she's slaying, okay? We love her so much. It says, monsters and curses, yes please. This YA anthology features authors such as Chloe Gong, Erica Waters, Courtney Gold, exploring haunted lakes, wicked and burning towns, isolated bridges, and more. And then the last one is one that is called Eternally Yours and Marple. And this again is another anthology. I think this one is adult, but it might be YA. I'll pop it on the screen. And this particular one is a group of short stories that have all been based off of Agatha Christie, like classic crime murder mystery novels. I'm really excited to pick this up and I'm really excited to kind of see which authors have been inspired by which tales. I'm especially intrigued because I've heard Lee Bardugo has written a story for this and I love Lee Bardugo's writing so much. And that's it for all of the book releases. Now let's go ahead and go to film and television series that I'm excited for this autumn. you guys, the very first one that I am thrilled about is The School for Good and Evil. I can't even tell you how much I'm excited about this particular movie. So this comes out October 21st and it comes out on Netflix. Let me tell you a little bit about it just in case you're unfamiliar. This is based off of a middle grade series by Saman Chanani and I loved this middle grade series so much. I think I read up to book three. We're following Agatha and Sophie who are best friends and in the town where they live, they've been told that there is a mythical magical school where they pick out people to train to be either like the heroes of fairy tales or the villains of fairy tales. And one day these two best friends are snatched up and taken to the school of good and evil. I think this is my number one most anticipated movie. I cannot wait for this. So if the school of good and evil was my most anticipated movie, this next one is my most anticipated television series and that is going to be 
the Wednesday Addams slash Addams Family remake. And this is of course going to be streaming on Netflix. This comes out in November and this is going to be a Tim Burton television series. And I think that alone really piqued my interest because I love Tim Burton and I love like stylistically all of his choices. So we are following Wednesday Addams. She's gonna be kind of more of the focus than the family in this remake. And in this particular one, she's been kicked out of a ton of different schools for getting up to a lot of antics. And her parents actually send her to an academy called Nevermore Academy, where in this remake, the parents actually met. I think that the academy is going to be a little spooky, a little gothic, possibly a little magical. It's giving me all of the perfect vibes for spooky season and I can't wait. So as soon as Wednesday Adam actually goes to this academy, she says in the trailer, little did I know I'd be stepping into a nightmare filled with mystery, mayhem, and murder. Next up is a movie that I have been excited for and I have been wanting and manifesting since I was a little kid and that is Hocus Pocus 2. So this comes out September 30th on Disney Plus and I could not be more thrilled. Just in case you didn't know, Hocus Pocus, Halloween Town, Casper, these are all my favorite movies, not just to watch like now, but like period. This particular one is following three best friends and they accidentally conjure up the Sanderson sisters to come back. And now the Sanderson sisters are more determined than ever to stay as a permanent fixture in this sleepy town, Salem. I am so excited. If you've never seen the first one, I highly recommend it. It's very cozy and whimsical and really funny. It's a little spooky, but like, it's honestly not scary at all. I love it so much and I can't wait to see this and again this comes out September 30th. Next up we are going to be seeing a couple different sequels. The first one is Enola Holmes 2 and this comes out to Netflix I believe in November. If you have not seen the first one again I highly recommend it especially if you're a person who loves dark academia vibes. We're following the little sister of Sherlock Holmes who has been taught by her mother to be very very observant and the first one is really about her trying to find out what happened to her mom once she mysteriously disappeared. The second one, however, is her trying to take on a full murder mystery missing persons case. And I think she enlists the help of her big brother, Sherlock. The next sequel here I have is The Glass Onion, and this is a Knives Out novel. If you have not seen Knives Out, like I could not recommend it more. I thought it was so perfect, especially for fall. It's very cozy and atmospheric, and it takes place, I think, in the colder months as well. So it feels feels very timely for Autumn in my opinion. The first one was about a family who was there to get an inheritance when I think like the grandfather passes away, but then they aren't listed on the will and now they're all out for blood. The second one is about a tech billionaire named Miles who invites his friends for a getaway on his private Greek island. When someone turns up dead, Detective Blanc is put on the case. So it sounds kind of like a similar premise, except these ones are friends and this is gonna be a Greek island. I don't know how necessarily like fall-esque it's going to seem, but I am really excited to see the sequel to Knives Out, so I can't wait to see it. And this particular one comes out December 23rd. And then finally, we have two movies that are going to be released in theaters, so these are not available to stream yet. The first one is going to be The Invitation, and the release date was August 26th, which means it is out now everywhere in theaters, um, at least like in America where I live. So people are saying that this is like if Crimson Peak and Ready or Not had a baby, and that just sounds so freaking good to me. After the death of her mother and having no other known relatives, Evie takes a DNA test and discovers a long lost cousin she's never known she had before. Invited by her newfound family to a lavish wedding in the English countryside, Evie's at first seduced by the sexy aristocratic host. However, she's soon thrust into a nightmare of survival as she uncovers twisted secrets about her family history and the unsettling intentions behind their sinful generosity. And then finally, the last movie on this list, um, which is out everywhere September 23rd, is Don't Worry, Darling. <sighs> This has been everywhere. Like there's a lot of drama specifically that is trailing this movie, which is like a whole other story. But let me tell you, the trailer has sold me and I'm very excited to actually give this a shot. A housewife goes and lives with her husband in this utopian type of setting in the 1950s. However, there are secrets and more sinister things at play. I feel like it looks really beautiful, like cinematically. 
and I love Florence Pugh so much, so I'm really excited to kind of see her and her take in this role. So I have high expectations for it. And you guys, I think that is it. Those are all of the books, TV series, and also films that I would like to see in the upcoming months. However, I might have missed a couple, so if there is something that you were excited for and you would like to let me know down below, please do so because I might just add it to my list. And if you have made it to this part of the video, please leave me the ghost emoji. And once again, a huge, huge thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. I have never enjoyed sleep so much before in my whole entire life. I'm obsessed with my bed. All of the links for them will be down below. I could not recommend them more. Please, please, please go check them out. And I think you guys, that is it. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Stay spooky.